In 1925, Martin Heidegger was a philosophy professor in Freiburg, Germany, and he was quite the superstar. Heidegger was a real celebrity uh, when he was a, a young professor in his 30s. That's Joshua Rothman, an editor at The New Yorker. He says Heidegger was a really charismatic guy. As a young professor, uh, you know, people had a, a fervent admiration for Heidegger and, and students, you know, fell under his spell. Including female students, like 19-year-old Hannah Arendt. She was an undergraduate student in his philosophy class. And he sent her a note being like, we should meet. <laughs> More specifically, Heidegger wrote, Dear Miss Arendt, I must come to see you this evening and speak to your heart. I will never be able to call you mine, but from now on, you will belong in my life. That led to their affair, even though Heidegger was married. But let's step back a few years. Heidegger was born in rural Germany in 1889. In university, he studied philosophy, and by 1923, Heidegger was the intellectual star of Germany. Two years later, his affair with Hannah Arendt began. But that ended when Arendt fled Germany. The Nazi party had risen to power, and she was Jewish. Shortly after that, you know, Heidegger became a Nazi. When Hitler came to power, Heidegger got promoted. He became the president of the university. Heidegger embraced the Nazi party. When his esteemed mentor, Edmund Husserl, got fired from Freiburg University for being Jewish, Heidegger did nothing to defend him. He also denied financial aid to non-Aryan students. After the war ended, the Nazi party fell, and Heidegger fell from grace. But his Jewish lover from almost two decades earlier came to his defense. A big reason why Heidegger's reputation survived being a Nazi is because Hannah Arendt defended him, because he did very little to defend himself or to apologize for his uh, membership in the Nazi party during the war. Heidegger remained pretty much silent on the subject. Hannah Arendt, in defending him, essentially argued like that he, had, he was politically stupid and he was bad at politics, but he was great at philosophy. This was sort of the idea. But Rothman says that's a weak argument. It's hard to say of someone who is supposed to be a genius that they just got swept up in it because they weren't thinking very clearly. Especially after Heidegger's secret memoir, the so-called Black Notebooks, were published in 2014. So he wrote in these black notebooks his whole life, and he, before he died, set up a schedule of publication for the notebooks. The final notebooks published were the ones he wrote during World War II, in which he used his own philosophy to make anti-Semitic statements. He'll say, well, you know, Jews are uh, a naturally calculating race, and like more so than other people, uh, you know, they're less good at authentic being because they're, they, they actually, in some sense, embody the modern impulse towards making use of everything that you see around you. Rothman says that raises a big question. Does it mean that intrinsically Heidegger's ideas are bad, that they can be used in this bad way? So, you know, I tend to think Heidegger took his own thoughts and he screwed them up, but it doesn't mean that his original thoughts weren't good. Joshua Rothman admits, it's hard to read Heidegger and ignore his racist politics. But it's also a shame to disregard Heidegger's philosophy because of his politics. Martin Heidegger himself once said, He who thinks great thoughts often makes great errors. Maybe he was talking about himself. For Philosophy Talk, I'm Shuka Kalantari. <laughs>